So Avatar, one of the best TV shows ever created, has some questions within it that never get answered. Characters that never really get explored. And nations that we never actually see. But fear not, because that's where we the fans come in. Because many of us have taken our fast passion and knowledge for the series to the next level and have begun to theorize and explain in great detail all the questions that were left unanswered by the show's creators. And today we've compiled some of the most incredible and popular theories around into this one video. And let me just say we have included some real juicy ones. Like have you ever wondered if the Avatar Cycle could actually return in the future of the show? Or what the real identity of the Painted Lady was from Season 3's episode, The Painted Lady? Well sit back, relax and let's explore the depths of the Avatar theory world because it really runs deep and it is actually quite entertaining. Starting off with the popular theory and question on who was actually the Painted Lady in the episode The Painted Lady. Now I don't know about you but I wondered about this for years, questioning everyone and everything in the series to figure out who might it be. But now for those who haven't actually watched the show 15 times allow me to recap the episode in question. Because for the most part it is actually one of the less interesting and unimportant episodes in the entirety of the show. You could honestly just skip it and you actually wouldn't have to worry about missing out on anything. The episode begins with Sokka trying to fish for food and having no luck. Until eventually they come across a small river town named Jang Hui. In this village they find some strange and potentially poisonous fish. Sokka being his very logical self insists that they just eat and then continue moving on because they are running out of time and may actually miss their 8 minute window for the eclipse. Katar, however, in her usual self-righteous demeanor, insists on helping the sick people of the village. Eventually, after she realizes that healing one or two people in the village isn't going to change a whole lot for the village itself. So she and Aang destroy the Fire Nation factory that was actually polluting the river. The river then, almost magically, clears up in about a day. We then meet the woman or spirit in question at the end of the episode, when she appears and thanks her for cleaning up the river. But in that moment, we never actually learn who she actually is. That is until the theory I'll be explaining in this video was made. Because for the longest time, many, including myself, believed it to be Princess Yue from the Northern Water Tribe. You know, the girl that was touched by the Moon Spirit and later became the Moon Spirit. The girl that Sokka fancied but never actually got in the end. Yeah, her. You see, the reason behind her being seen as the Painted Lady was simply because she was already described as the Moon Spirit. And the Painted Lady was said to be the Water Spirit. And as we've already seen, the Ocean and Moon Spirits live together in the Spirit Oasis. One fish is white in colour, and one is black. Yue, of course, has some pretty white hair. And the Painted Lady, of course, has some black hair. Meaning for them both to be related to the said fish inside the Spirit Oasis is actually very logical. And of course the Painted Lady is also seen with a crescent moon painted on her forehead, showing that she does have some relation to the Moon Spirit. And if that wasn't already enough for you, the moon itself is seen over and over again in this very episode. For in the beginning we can see a crescent moon, that later that same night becomes a full moon. Almost like it was showcasing that Yue noticed that someone was pretending to be her and wanted to take a quick peek to see what was actually happening. Now this theory to me and many of you sounded like absolute perfection. That was until the release of the Kyoshi novels. Because in them it is revealed that the Painted Lady was actually around before Kyoshi's time. And of course that means Yue couldn't possibly be the Painted Lady because well she wasn't even a twinkle in her daddy's eye at that point in time. So what this reveal did is it brought the return of the question. Who is the Painted Lady? And that brings us all the way to today's theory that we'll be highlighting in this video. The theory that claims Yumi, Avatar Kurok's lover, was the Painted Lady. You see, Umi is one of those poor souls that never really get explained in the Avatar series, but we do at least get to see her face. And the fact that we know that her face was taken by Ko the face stealer is a big factor for why we know that she is the perfect candidate to be the Painted Lady. But before we get into any of that, let me first explain the theory in question. Kurok and Yumi met at the New Moon Festival, they fell in love at first sight, and then he gives her a betrothal necklace and they become engaged. But during the wedding, as Yumi is walking down the aisle, Ko pulls her into the spirit world through the spirit oasis and steals her face. He did this because Kirk, during his time, was apparently an avatar that hunted down dark spirits. But that's a story for another video. Umi, after being pulled into the spirit oasis, of course died. And now I want to take you back to the offense that led to Yumi becoming the moon spirit. You see, she first had to be a human that was healed by the moon spirit itself in the spirit oasis. So using this as an example for how someone becomes a spirit, it isn't hard to imagine that the ocean spirit did something similar to Umi when she was pulled into the spirit oasis and had her face stolen. I believe in that moment or the moments just before her death, she was healed or attempted to be healed by the ocean fish spirit itself. And then of course there comes the matter of their names. Yue of course means moon, and she of course became the moon spirit. Yumi, when spelt U-M-I, translates to sea. So her becoming the ocean or sea spirit is already to some degree almost fated to be. 
Now, if you've been paying attention, then you'd already start to see the connection that is being formed between these two characters and their respective fish. But just wait, because there is a tiny bit more. Remember how I said Ko stealing Yumi's face was a big part for why she is potentially the Painted Lady? Well, that's because the Painted Lady paints on her face because she no longer has one of her own. The Painted Lady is a faceless spirit by the name of Umi, and that is the same Umi that of course was engaged to be married to Avatar Karok. So like every story in Avatar, it ultimately comes back to the Avatar. But now moving on to our next theory about the Avatar cycle and how it isn't actually destroyed and may actually come back in the future Avatar series. For you see, if you didn't already know, the removal of the past lives was one of the most controversial things that Korra ever actually did. Because to me and many of you, meeting the past avatars and learning their stories was one of the coolest things in Avatar itself. Like when we get to see that incredible image of all the avatars lined up together in front of Korra, all I and many of you wanted to know in that moment was everything about them. Like who are you? Or you? Or even you? But now, because the avatar timeline has been restarted, it appears that we may never learn anything about any of them. Which honestly kind of sucks in my opinion and makes the series far less interesting. Which is why I and many of the Avatar community believe it will actually be fixed in the future story. Because this is a main selling point for Avatar itself. Without it, Avatar is kinda dull. But how might it actually be fixed in the future? Well, going off of this theory, it may not actually be completely broken at all. Allow me to explain. We begin with a deep dive and explanation into the communication with the past lives and how it actually works. It is explained that the Avatar has two primary ways of communications with their past lives. The first of course is entering the spirit world and finding said life. And the second is that the past avatar uses a certain spiritual place or time to then come out of the spirit world into the human world. Which is seen done a number of times by Aang, Kyoshi and Roku. In fact one of the first times that this is done and explained is by Roku himself in the fire temple located in the fire nation on the day of the winter solstice. Because that fits all criteria. It was a special location on a special day, allowing him access to the human world. But it is also stated that past lives can come to the human world when the avatar themselves is at their lowest point. This is done by using the fragmentation of their spirit that exists within the avatar spirit Rafa. And this was seen when Roku appeared to Aang when Aang was at his lowest point and floating in the middle of an ocean. And it was also seen when Aang himself appeared to Korra when she was at her lowest point after losing her bending. But what does all this have to do with the restoration of the avatar cycle? Well you see this leads us to the event that led to Korra losing access to her past lives. That is the separation and destruction of Rafa. For you see, in that moment, as we witness each and every avatar spirit slowly dissipate, we are told that Korra has lost all ability to communicate with her past lives. But that isn't actually 100% true. And if you actually paid attention to the events that happened later in Korra, then you'd know why. For you see, during the destruction of Rafa, the past lives did lose one form of communication with the avatar. That is the human spirit connection that the avatar had. For you see, the past lives are no longer capable of exiting the spirit world and entering the human world. Because the essence that connected them to Rafa has been severed. But the spiritual connection that they had to the spirit world itself is still intact. Meaning that by entering the spirit world and locating the spirit of let's say Aang, you can still communicate with him and learn from him. Which is what we see happen in the same exact episode when Tenzin meets Aang in the spirit world for the first time. For that isn't just the essence of Aang that Korra can see because she's the avatar. That is him in his true unfiltered spiritual form. But now it is also worth noting however that there is no evidence that states it to be impossible for spirits to use special places or times to then leave the spirit world and come to the human one. Like as far as I can see or understand it does seem entirely possible, just potentially not as easy as it once was. So in conclusion Korra and any avatar that comes next will have the potential to find and learn from avatars like Aang, Kyoshi, Roku and even Yang Chen. It will just have to be done within the spirit world. But of course this also requires them to figure out how to do that first. Which will most definitely be easier said than done. As even Roku himself had to explain it to Aang in the first place and he was potentially one of the most spiritual avatars of all. But that being said the next avatar will still have Korra to talk to so it isn't all that impossible for them to learn how to do it through her. But that also means Korra will have to figure it out within her own time. But moving on we have our final theory and this is one of the most let's say creative and almost hopeful ones of all. It's the theory that claims Aang never actually died and was secretly hiding out as a man. Now first off this theory isn't just related to Aang because during the middle of season 1 Korra there were countless Aman theories being made left right and center claiming this guy or that guy or even him to be the mysterious Aman. But the one that garnered the most attention and had most people hoping and praying to become true was the one about Aang being a man. And that's what we'll be discussing today. 
You see, this theory originated with this one image that was posted everywhere. You could find it in YouTube videos, on Twitter, or even in the Avatar Reddit. Well, actually, I do believe it originated in the Avatar Reddit, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So just take that with a grain of salt. The image appeared so legit that many actually claimed it was first created and posted by the show's creators themselves. But when it was posted, it actually came out claiming to be a screenshot from episode 7 of season 1, where Tenzin himself had a nightmare about Aang, his father, being a man. Now, it would usually be around this point that I start doing a deep dive and explanation into everything about this theory and explain how it actually works or why it doesn't, but that isn't actually possible with this one. Because aside from it claiming to be a screenshot from episode 7, it has nothing more to it. It's simply a popular image that led many to panic and discussions on the potential ways that Aang could return. And spoiler alert, because of the offense in Korra, we may actually never see Aang again, or any of the other avatars in fact. But that is unless the theory that we just discussed on the spirit world comes true. But with that, that's going to do it for this video explaining some of the most popular and interesting theories around the avatar community. If you'd enjoyed and want to see more avatar theories, then click the first link below, as I've actually already made another video discussing theories like how Tai Li is secretly an airbender, or how Aang has a secret son that no one actually knows about. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, as it really helps us out a lot. But with that, I'm out. Have a great rest of your day, and peace.